is The Thriving Dentist Show with Gary Takas, where we help you develop your ideal dental practice, one that provides personal, professional, and financial satisfaction. Welcome to another episode of The Thriving Dentist Show. I'm Gary Takas, your podcast co-host. Uh, we have a fun episode for you today. It is titled, Enhance Your Practice with an In-Office Membership Plan. Uh, I'll be sharing with you all the details about how to successfully implement an in-office membership plan. I personally think every practice should have something like this, and we'll share uh, our knowledge and our experience on this with you today. Hey, before I get into that, though, a couple of announcements to make. First announcement is uh, upcoming in May, towards uh, the middle of May, uh, we have our Thriving Dentist MBA Workshop, Thriving Dentist MBA Livestream Workshop. It's May 15th, 16th, and 17th. So it's nine hours of CE spread out over three hours an evening, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night, three hours, seven to 10 Eastern time. You can do the uh, time translation with your own time zone, but three hours an evening. It's a nine hour course. And during that Thriving Dentist MBA, I go through the 10 elements of a thriving practice. Uh, also go through the 24 systems of a thriving practice. And it literally is the equivalent of uh, earning a, a, an MBA relative to owning a dental practice. And this is our last time that we will ever do this MBA live stream workshop. Uh, we actually sunsetted it at the end of 2022. And we made a decision internally that that was our last one. We did it in uh, uh, late 2022. And we said, okay, that's it. We'll be doing shorter courses online, more masterclass formats. And then we had so many requests from people because we didn't announce that we were sunsetting it. We had so many announcements said, hey, can we do, can you just do one more? I, I missed my opportunity to attend. So we said, yeah, we'll do one more for you. So that's coming up May 15th, 16th, 17th. And that's it. Um, it's, as I mentioned, it's nine hours to see you get nine hours of credit. It's very inexpensive, a uh, little bit more than $200 in terms of tuition. I think pretty uh, cost effective per unit of CE. And more importantly, everything you need to know about developing a thriving practice. Um, come join us. We'd love to have you join us on this last Thriving Dentist uh, MBA live stream workshop. It's, it's live stream, meaning we do it virtually. You attend from the comfort and convenience of your home or office, but it's done live. So you can interact and ask questions. I run it more like a workshop than a lecture and would love to have you join us on this last Thriving Dentist MBA workshop. All right. The next announcement I have is we have a, another top clinical tip. Uh, we always like to put a top clinical tip in these intros. This is a new guest. Uh, his name is Dr. Steve Yusupov, and he has been invited by a, a longtime contributor to the Thriving Dentist Show, Dr. Pavel Krestev. And uh, Pavel invited Steve to come join us. And Steve is an oral surgeon, and he's going to share uh, with you great information about multi-unit abutments, multi-unit abutments. I think you're going to appreciate Dr. Yusupov's uh, uh, insight on this and uh, something that I'm sure you can apply in your practice. So here's no further ado. Here's Dr. Steve Yusupov on multi-unit abutments. Hi, everyone, uh, colleagues, friends. Um, my name is Dr. Steve Yusupov. I'm an oral maxillofacial surgeon. Um, I specialize in broad scope oral surgery, but additionally in uh, head neck oncologic surgery. Uh, so I treat anything from basic oral surgery and um, everyday bread and butter stuff to um, head and neck cancer patients. And I want to say thank you uh, to Thriving Dentist Organization. And I want to say thank you to my friend Pavel Kratzev for making the introduction and for giving me this opportunity uh, to share a clinical tip with you guys. And um, when I was asked to uh, um, give you guys a clinical tip, um, I started breaking my mind and ask myself, what should I talk about? Should I talk about an oncologic disease and mention something about cancer management or um, general dentist perspective of it? Or should I talk about perhaps facial trauma? Um, and as I thought about it, um, I went through my day today. Um, I was actually teaching in a dental program on uh, Thursday morning and uh, one of my residents came up to me and started just randomly speaking to me and he brought up uh, multi-unit abutments. And then I got a call from one of my 
a general dentist that I work with and asked me about a case that involved discussing multi-unit abutments. So I figured that I'll talk to you about multi-unit abutments since this happens to be uh, a very hot topic, implant dentistry, and um, I do treat a lot of implant patients in my practice and um, we do put in implants in regular patients and uh, for large cases and we do put implants in into people's fibulas when we use them to reconstruct uh, post ablative defects. And um, I do use a lot of multi-unit abutments. For those that don't have a lot of experience with them, what multi-abutments are is what they sound to be. Uh, it's an abutment that was intended originally to be used on a multi-unit restoration, such as a full large, such as an, an all in four, such as an all in X, uh, which is a more evolved name. It's an abutment that does a lot of things. It, uh, in my opinion, one of the most important ones is it corrects an angulation of an implant. So you could use an angled abutment. Um, even if you have a case that doesn't involve placing angled implants, you could still multi, you, you could still use multi-unit abutments, which in this case, what it would do is it would take your restorative platform away from the implant platform, which in turn is known and has been shown to uh, decrease crestal bone loss. Additionally, it eliminates the need of using cement, which also improves overall implant prognosis and uh, obviate the need to use dental cement to cement restorations. But you probably, and a lot of you probably are very familiar with using them for this purpose and the full arch restorations. Uh, so what I wanted to bring up to your attention is um, we could use multi unit abutments for a limited restorations. And there's been a big trend in dentistry to go towards immediate load. And um, that's where I think multi-unit abutment use comes in and play. If you're putting a several implants for an implant bridge, um, you could put multi-unit abutments on those implants. And that serves a dual purpose in my opinion. One is you could easily place a temporary restoration by doing an intraoral scan. Um, there's an you know, additional uh, trend in dentistry where we're starting to head digital into digital era and more and more people are using digital scanning. Um, you could basically you know, hook up with the local lab that does digital work and at a very low cost, simple intraoral scan, a, a lab could 3D print or perhaps you use a 3D printer yourself. A lab could design and just send you a file where you could in an office print a, a very low cost immediate restoration and keep in mind the multi unit abutments that you placed um, could still be used for the final so you're now wasting the abutments to give the patient temporary it's a dual use you do use the abutments for the temp you do reuse them for the final and i think we give our patients a great service by doing that they get teeth faster um, it conditions the gingiva and the tissue for the final and gives a better emergence profile and appearance ultimately of the final restoration. Uh, if anybody wants to hear more about um, digital dentistry, multi-unit abutments, full arch, don't hesitate, reach out. I'll be glad to uh, share my wisdom with everyone. And again, thank you for inviting me for, uh, to the podcast and uh, allowing me to chime in and give my two cents. Um, would love the feedback. If anybody wants to hear anything about other topics, cancer, trauma, reconstruction, um, TMJ, dental implants, wisdom teeth. Um, I'll be glad to um, weigh in and give my two cents. Cheers. Have a good weekend, everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Thriving Dentist Coaching and Action segment. This is Narain, your co-host. Dr. Steve Yusupov, thank you for that wonderful tip uh, where you talked about multi-unit abutments. Appreciate it. Uh, let's jump into today's coaching in action, Gary. And I love today's topic because um, the topic today is enhance your practice with an in-office membership plan. Enhance your practice with an in-office membership plan. The reason I love it is I think, especially over the last 10 to 20 years, all of us have realized the power of affinity programs. Of course, the original one that I, I remember was Costco's membership plan, right? Costco realized that those who had the membership plan were spending so much more money than they would spend on a similar store like Costco. Uh, 
So they really, you know, went above and beyond to add more and value to their members. Almost like and, a loyalty, like a loyalty plan. Exactly. Loyalty plan. And they gave lots of incentives. They tracked how much you were spending and they even pretty much gave you a free Costco card as long as you spent more than a certain amount. Uh, then Amazon came along and I guess one of the engineers there suggested we should do the same and they came up with Prime. Prime, I don't have the exact stats with me, but I think it's more than 100 million people have Prime Prime accounts. Uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's humongous. It's a crazy high number. It's a huge number. And I and believe uh, both of us have Amazon Prime accounts. Yes, we all do. And probably every one of our listeners has one. Exactly. And the other thing we also know is before Prime, we spent nowhere anywhere close to what we spend now after we have Prime. Like almost every few days, there's something we buy on Amazon. And because Prime makes it so easy, and of course, they give you fast shipping and all the other benefits you get with Prime. Uh, and then, of course, the airline, uh, right? A lot of people who are travelers here, uh, like you might be collecting airline points. And again, an example of affinity affinity plans. Yeah. So uh, so that's what, what Gary is going to talk about today. And, and the second backdrop in all of this is more than half of American adults do not have membership. I mean, do not have insurance. So there's a huge number of people where this makes a lot of sense to. So Gary, take it away. Yeah, you know, an in-office membership plan is a way to roll the red carpet out and attract people in your community who do not have insurance, which is a, a practice, brilliant practice building strategy. Because when a patient doesn't have insurance, they're not going to ask you two questions. Are you in my network? Because yes. there is no network. That would be a, a just a silly question. And then if you present dentistry to them, they're not going to say, doc, does my insurance cover that? Right. They may have questions for you. It may say, well, the tooth doesn't hurt. Why do you recommend I get this taken care of? That's a fair question. Yes. But it's not going to be insurance-based. It's going to be more based on outcome and benefits. And I think most dentists would much rather uh, hear the question, doc, it, it doesn't hurt. Why do you recommend that I replace it? They'd much rather hear that than does my insurance pay for it? <laughs> and the dirty secret the insurance companies don't want you to know is, as Naren mentioned, there are more adult Americans who do not have dental insurance than those that do. The 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 pond is bigger. Right. <laughs> Go fish in a bigger pond. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and and beauty of that pond is it's not as uh, you know competitive, you know, because yeah. not too many dentists are fishing in that pond. Right. Right. Let's go there. Um, well, a membership plan, what is it, first of all? Naren, I think you described it very well. It's like your own office Costco card or your own Am office Amazon Prime card. Think of it that way you know, just kind of in a context, think of it that way. And uh, I'm going to, we're going to go into some granular detail to today with you. This is one of those episodes that's more detailed than philosophical. Um, by the way, at Life Smiles uh, Dental Care, um, to our knowledge, we were one of the first practices in the country to have an in-office membership plan back in 2007 when, when we created ours. Um, and there may have been others that were around that same time, but we're not aware of them. Um, uh, and a uh, membership plan is something that sort of has taken off since then. It's still not very common. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, it's a minority of practices that have it, but it's something that every listener to The Thriving Dentist Show could benefit from. Um, now, uh, you can call it um, uh, some creative names. We call ours our TLC savings plan, tender love and care savings plan. But you, you can't call it your in-office insurance plan. You can't call it that. That's a technicality there. You want to stay out of the, the mud on that one. You wouldn't want to call it an insurance plan because then you'd have to uh, comply with all the insurance regulations. You'd have to have massive reserve accounts and all kinds of other things. We don't need to do that. But what could you call it? You could you call it TLC savings plan. You could call it your smile savers plan. You call it your VIP patient plan. You could call it your VIP smile plan. <laughs> Any different variation. You get the idea. Uh, call it something like that. And what you're going to do, what I would recommend that the format I recommend to our clients is you come up with an annual fee, an annual fee. They pay it annually. And that fee includes two hygiene appointments, uh, any necessary x-rays and exams. And you come up with an annual fee and you come up with whatever fee that you think would be appropriate for those services. Now, it's a little bit tricky to do the calculation because you don't know exactly what x-rays the patients are going to need. It could be bite wings. It could be full mouth series. It could be a panoramic x-ray, or it could be a CBCT if you have a CBCT. In our case, since we have a CBCT, 
then if the patient's missing a tooth, then we're going to take a, a 3D comb beam image uh, and come up with an annual fee. Um, patient pays that annually. And then in addition to that membership uh, a fee, they will, will provide them with a savings on any service in your practice. And we did the heavy lifting for you to determine what that savings should be. So uh, I wanted to find out scientifically, how much do we have to offer to get people to sign up, but at the same time, affect the practice as minimally as possible. It's a little bit of a, a you know, puzzle to figure out. How much do we have to offer to get people to sign up and yet make the pricing such that it minimizes the financial impact on the practice? So we tested various, we did AB split testing, scientific AB split testing, over a thousand practices. We tested a 20% discount, 18%, 15, 12, 10, and eight. And there, and here's what we learned in that research. 10% was the sweet spot. 10% was enough to encourage people to sign up but not so much to impact the practice negatively. Now, I want to go on the record as saying, I don't like the 10% discount. Darren, I don't like it one bit, but I like it a heck of a lot better than the 45 to 50% discount that, that Delta is uh, enforcing you into. It's a lot better than that, right, right. Darren? Absolutely, Gary. Yeah, so 10% uh, discount. I recommend that you do this as an annual fee. Some offices will offer a monthly, you know, they'll break it down and make it monthly. But I like to do it annually for two reasons. Number one, they're prepaying for their hygiene. Right. Naren, do you think, um, imagine this, imagine that uh, I owned a gym, a, a fitness center, a gym. And I had annual membership fees and you paid an annual membership fee. You're probably more likely to go to the gym, right? Because you're prepaid for it. Yes. Yes. I mean, Right. That, that is theoretically correct, yes. As opposed to a monthly fee where you might say, well, you know, I can stop I, it I, now. I don't want to pay. Yeah, I don't want to yeah. go. I didn't go last month, so I'm not going to go this month. Right. So I, I like the idea of an annual fee because they prepay for the hygiene. When someone's prepaid for it, they're more likely to show up. And right. secondly, um, it makes it a lot easier to administer because you only have to run one charge a year. Right. And so and you plus, they up, don't have to you know, decide whether they need it or not 12 times a year. They can just decide once a year. That's, you know, that's a good business decision. Yeah. Yeah. I'd much rather have, have the decision-making process once a year, not 12 times a year. Right. Absolutely. Think how cool this is for the patient. Um, by the way, now what I'm about to say clinically, I want everyone to know, especially our hygienists that are listening. We have many hygienists that listen to the Thriving Dentist Show. I want the hygienists to know that I know what I'm about to say doesn't make sense clinically. But if the patient wants to come in Tuesday, for the first hygiene appointment of the year, and they want to come in Thursday for the second one. I know that doesn't make sense clinically, but if they wanted to, guess what, Naren? Knock yourself out. Exactly. <laughs> they can do that. Now, what happens if they do that with their Delta Dental Insurance? How's that second insurance going to be, be paid? Denied. Even denied. If they come five months and 29 days later. <laughs> denied. Denied. Yes. Um, I recommend not having any exclusions to your 10% to your, uh, savings. So no fine print. Um, think how cool this is, Naren. Just think about the benefits of it. No annual limit. You know, most dental insurance plans today have an annual limit. Some of it, sometimes it's still $1,000 a year. Yes. Sometimes it's $1,200. Sometimes it's $1,500. Is there an annual limit to the membership plan savings? Zero. None. No you annual limit. They can, yeah. if, they, if they need complex dentistry, you know, I know that complex restorative dentistry is not an everyday thing. But if the patient had a $40,000 treatment plan and they're a membership plan patient, they're going to save 10%. That's a $4,000 savings. Uh, and we can always talk about the savings when we're presenting dentistry to our membership plan patients. And here's maybe the best benefit of all. How much time are my admin team members spending submitting claims and following up with the insurance company with our membership plan? Zero. Zero. None. Think how cool this is. It's a great way to figuratively roll the red carpet out to people in your community who don't have insurance. And the other thing I, I think you know this, Gary, is like you're an analytics person. Those with membership plans end up having more dentistry done than those without. They end up showing up more regularly for hygiene than those without. Well, they it's do the because same, they prepaid for it. Um, yeah, prepaid for it. Exactly. And you want those hygiene exams because it's those hygiene exams that's going to cultivate the you know, the necessary or elective dentistry that comes out of those exams. 
Right. It's just a very cool program to have in your practice. Um, and I, it, it's something we recommend to all of our clients, especially those that are going out of network, because it becomes a great way to attract people to your practice that uh, don't have insurance. Uh, and and yes, there's a 10% uh, discount on that, but it's a heck of a lot better than the 45 to 50% that you'd be subjected to under the PPO plan. And by the way, their fees are going down. Yes. They're, they're going down. Um, and it's something that people appreciate. One of the byproducts we've learned is that, you know, today we have a somewhat mobile population. People move around. If you have a membership plan patient, maybe they move 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away. They're likely to still stay in your practice because the membership plan only applies in your practice, right? So they'll stay in your practice. It's loyalty. Uh, and, it, and they'll, they tell their colleagues about it. They tell their friends, they tell their coworkers, their family members about it. Uh, it's a great way to do this. Now, if you're if you're curious about pricing, I can't tell you what to charge for your membership plan. You'll have to decide that yourself. Um, but typically what we see um, among our client base is an annual fee, uh, you know, somewhere between say $350 to $450 a year, $350 to $450, $350 on the lower side, $450 on the higher side. Again, you'll have to decide yourself. You, you decide. And that would be two hygiene appointments. Uh, that would be um, any necessary x-rays. And I would recommend being very liberal uh, with, with the x-rays um, because it's just giving you information that you need. And if you're digital, it doesn't cost you anything to take those uh, x-rays. You're not consuming supplies. Um, and take the records that you need because it allows you to be more thorough, and more comprehensive, provide the patient with more information so they can make good decisions. You know, if, if you're taking a CBCT, Naren, think about what a good value that is for a patient that's missing a tooth. We're taking a CBCT, your, your annual fee may be less than a, 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 you know, an imaging center's fee for taking a, a 3D image. What a great value it is to the patient. So it's something that really makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I would encourage everyone uh, that's listening to this to, to, to do this. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, when we, we created ours in 07, we actually uh, had to consult with an attorney uh, to make sure that this was something we were allowed to do. We weren't sure. And uh, I consulted with uh, a dental, uh, a dental experienced uh, an attorney. Uh, his name was Lee Maddox. Some of you may know Lee. He's in Newport Beach, uh, endodon dentist, endodontist, and uh, JD. And uh, Lee did some research for us and said, you can absolutely do this. Just don't make the mistake of calling it your in-office insurance plan. He said, you can call it anything else, but you can't call it insurance. Um, so it's a very cool way, very cool way to, to, to build your practice to offer, to, to figuratively roll the red carpet out and invite people from your community who don't already have dental insurance um, and build your practice on uh, people that, uh, uh, you know, aren't going to be asking you if it's covered by insurance or not. A really cool way uh, to do this. Um, some offices administer this themselves. You can administer yourself. It's very easy to administer, especially if you do it on an annual basis. Um, and, but you, there are third-party resources uh, that can administer this for you. Um, one of the companies that we like, they happen to be in Utah. It's called Boom Cloud. Uh, their website is Boom Cloud Apps, uh, B-O-O-M-C-L-O-U-D-A-P-P-S.com. Um, it is a great company with awesome support. We have no affiliation. There's no, uh, we don't have a horse in the race, but we love the work that they do. And uh, they can administer this for you. They can have all the paperwork for you, all the details, and make it very easy to implement. Uh, but you can do it yourself, or you could have it administered. It just depends on, uh, you know, what your staffing is like and what the team members' capabilities are in your practice. But uh, I would say in our client base, um, it's it's a mixture of self-administered versus, you know, using an outside resource. Uh, there are others other than BoomCloud. Uh, we happen to like them. Um, but there are others as well. Uh, Jordan Comstock is the founder of uh, Boom Cloud Apps, longtime friend of the Thriving Dentist Show. Great guy. And uh, I can assure you that he and his team will take great care of you if you'd rather have it administered by uh, by a third party. Make sure you you know, are following all legal compliance and everything else. And so some would prefer to have that, um, you know, have that that professional administration done on it. And in fact, Jordan will show you how um, uh, whatever fees are involved in that can be borne by the patient. So it's not going to cost you anything as well. Um, but what a great way to build your practice and what a great way to have recurring revenue. Nary, in the, in the business world, uh, the investor community 
is smitten by businesses that have recurring revenue. Right. Why is that? Uh, because, you know, you don't have to like the, the money that you have already earned is already kind of in the bank. In other words, let's say you have a hundred clients who are paying you a recurring uh, amount every month, like in the case of Netflix or any one of these recurring revenue businesses, that money is already assured for you. There's a good chance they'll keep doing that forever. So now they don't anything have to, new but their you loyalty do, is good. Their loyalty, they yeah. stick with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're you're um, incorporating a business model that includes some recurring revenue, right? Um, in your practice, and uh, you know Jordan Comstock will tell you that they have uh, clients that have significant annual recurring revenue coming from the membership plan. How about that? Isn't that kind of a cool a byproduct of this for sure? Imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's the, like before the beginning piece of the money. month, you have you know thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars already paid for through the membership plans every yeah. month. Yeah, uh, Jordan actually can share case studies where offices uh, have their overhead covered before they ever start the month with recurring revenue. Right. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, Naren, uh, we've got some great questions. I, I took a sneak peek ahead and looked at the questions. We've got some great questions that allow us to put even more texture to some of the details. But now you know about an in-office membership plan. And, uh, you know, one thing I always say is information is great, but you don't get the benefit of it till you apply it. This is a great example. Um, you know, knowledge without application is merely entertainment. And I want to encourage you to take action on this, either create your own membership plan or, or work with Boom Cloud or someone else to help you with one. And let's get one installed in your practice because then you get the benefit of it. All right. Well, let's hit pause here and uh, let's go to the Thriving Dentist Q&A segment. Welcome back to the Thriving Dentist Q&A segment. I hope you enjoyed our coaching and action segment today on enhancing your practice with an in-office membership plan. Gary, I have uh, quite a few questions for you, uh, to be exact, five questions for you with regards to membership plans from our audience. Uh, let me start with the very first question. What is the best way to market our in-office membership plan in my community? Yeah, great question. Um, because really, you want to use this um, as part of your marketing plan because you want to you put this message out in your community to attract people that don't have insurance. And, um, you know, the nice thing about that, Naren, is uh, we can actually find people demographically who don't have insurance. Yes. Let me, let me name three groups of people that uh, would be good candidates for this. And every, every listener will have people in those three categories. I can assure you of that. So number one is retirees. Retire. Now, Naren, let, let me just ask you, we didn't set this up ahead of time. So I'm asking, asking you kind of uh, extemporaneously. You're in Mississauga. Yes. Um, now I know, uh, you know, that's Canada, of course. Um, but, uh, it's not a retirement community, but you have retirees in Mississauga. Oh, tons of them. Absolutely. I'll bet you could probably even name some neighbors that aren't far yes. from you that are retirees. Yes. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's not Florida, <laughs> it's not Arizona, but you got retirees here, right? Absolutely. I so, mean, there's a lot of retirees who want to stay close to their grandkids. You sure. Know? So They're everywhere. If, if the kids and grandkids are, you know, around, they're going to, they're going to be there, you know? And the reason why I'm saying target retirees uh, is because uh, traditionally they don't have insurance. Uh, I believe it was my father's generation. That was the last generation where there were lifetime benefits, right? You know, whatever, whatever company they worked for, the benefits usually stayed with them for life. Well, that's not true anymore because it became too inexpensive, a financial burden for companies. And now once you retire, you'll get COBRA, it's an acronym, C-O-B-R-A, that'll give you benefits for a certain period of time. Then after that, you're on your own. And most people don't, don't uh, purchase those benefits because they're, they're a, dental insurance is a very poor investment right. <laughs> for them. It, it's ridiculously expensive with lousy um, return, lousy you know, benefits. Um, so um, let's find retirees, one group. Um, second group, it's the opposite end of the age spectrum, <clears throat> millennials. You got any millennials in Mississauga? Oh, we have, again, lots and lots of millennials in Mississauga. Uh, technically, millennials are, are defined as people born between 1980 and the year 2000. That's the, the, the uh, demographic de description from 1980 to the year 2000. So, And oftentimes, they don't have benefits yet because they haven't reached the point in their career 
where they're accorded benefits. Now, there are millennials that have dental insurance, but many don't. So let's go find them. Now, there's a third group of people that uh, is a bit of a catch-all category. But Naren, that would be a category that we call today gig economy workers, G-I-G, gig right. economy workers. Those would be freelancers, independent contractors, some uh, freelance tech workers. It could be an Uber driver, a Lyft driver, an Etsy shop owner, an Airbnb uh, someone runs an Airbnb business or a VRBO business. You got any of those, Mr. Sago? Oh, we have, you know, uh, Uber and, you know, th those types of gig workers. There's quite a few now. I mean, there's probably like, you know, just in my area, like I would say 10, 15% of the people here are gig economy work workers. Yeah, it's kind of the new. They don't economy. have like a single permanent job. They do a bunch of stuff, you right. know. Yeah, it gives them flexibility. Uh, yes. Oftentimes, it allows them to pursue their passions. Um, and uh, it's, you know, people aren't so much, you know, starting to work as a, as a young adult and, you know, working 40 years for a company anymore. That's not how it works anymore in the workforce. Right. So let's go find those people. Um, but Naren, I want to defer to you. Um, uh, with your marketing expertise, how can, can our listeners market a membership plan now that we know a little bit about, you know, the groups of people we might market to, how would you suggest they market it? Yeah, that's a great question, Gary. We work with a few hundred dental practice owners and, you know, many of them have membership plans. Uh, there's a there's must. Let me kind of start listing them out and then as needed, we can go in depth. Of course, I would strongly recommend making sure that all the relevant keywords that um, that you need to target, you're targeting and dominating SEO. What I mean by that is Gary already alluded to the fact that half of American adults do not have insurance. So more than, half. They, more than half. So they are looking for dentistry just as well as everybody else, you know, who has insurance is looking for dentistry. So, um, so keywords like, you know, um, uh, low cost dentistry or, you know, dentistry um, without insurance. I mean, there's all kinds of keywords. And the best way to figure out what keywords you should target in your area is use a tool called Google Analytics. It'll really kind of think of it like your dashboard to, you know, find out in your specific neighborhood, what are the keywords people are typing in. So you want to make sure you are really showing up for those kinds of keywords. The other thing I would point out is many of these patients perhaps have ignored their dental health for a while. So they are the ones who are going to have a lot of work to be done. They are the ones perhaps are coming through emergency. So even keywords like emergency dentistry might be a good way to attract those people who you know, no, are not taking care of their oral health for a while. And now they have tons of things piled up and they have some pain that they have to deal with. Um, so good I think- point definitely go after SEO and dominate. And the reason I start with SEO is because it's the lowest cost and the most effective way to get new patients. <laughs> then once you exhaust that, then I would really focus on, you know, targeting like the demographics Gary talked about, millennials, uh, gig workers, uh, the retirees. How do you do that? You can target them through ads. You can go after YouTube ads. You can go after Facebook ads. You can go after LinkedIn ads to target. For example, on Facebook ads, you can geofence your audience. So you can say, we can use multiple criteria. For example, you could say people that are 60 and older that live within 10 mile radius of my practice. And again, I'm just picking right. random examples here. If you're if you're in a city, it might be five miles away. If you're out in the country, it might be 20 miles away. But you could market that. You could geofence it, and only people that are sixty and older and live within this area will see those ads. And that way, your ad uh, budget will be more affordable because of that. You're not you're not shotgunning it out to everybody. You're it's more like a laser focused ad on a certain group of people. And that can absolutely. Be, and the simple the ad the ad is can actually be very simple. No dental insurance, no problem. Ask us about our smile savings plan. Right. And then, Naren, if they were working with you, if they click the ad, then it would go to a landing page on their website all about their membership plan. Of course, you would support your clients by creating the landing page uh, and all the related uh, collateral that goes along with that. Even the ads, you know, like you said, Gary, it's easy to lose a lot of money on ads, so you need somebody to manage it. So we do manage the uh, the ads program. So exactly like the negative keywords or the negative, you know, like how do you... How do you do it in a way where the return on investment is there? So there's a lot of uh, well, I'll brag, on, I'll brag on you for a minute, Aaron. Uh, Equa does that ad management 
at, at no additional cost to your monthly service fee. It's, it's covered as part of that service. The right. only additional fee you'll pay is the media cost. So if, if you choose, you, you'll say you want to spend $200 a month with Facebook, then you pay the 200 bucks to Facebook, but Equa does the ad management, which frankly is, is the hard part. And you right. guys do that as part of your service to your clients. What a great value. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I think those are like really effective strategies that I have seen that make a difference when it comes to growing your membership plan. Um, I'll add one base. more, uh, another channel, and that would be also um, uh, LinkedIn ads. LinkedIn is a social media channel that isn't, you know, it isn't in the same stratosphere as Facebook or Instagram or, or some of the others, but it's a, a, it's a valid social media channel. And who's on LinkedIn? Uh, LinkedIn would be executives that are between yes. jobs. And by the way, if if they don't have a job, guess what they don't have? Insurance. Dental insurance. But also, who else is on LinkedIn? Employers. Business, business owners and employers that are looking for executives. So they may see your ad and they may want to provide your membership plan to their employees rather than buying the Delta Dental insurance benefit. Right. Because it's way better. It's, it's way a lot better. less expensive, right? It's I mean, a you're third, talking well, it could be less than that even, but a third or less of the cost. Right. And much better benefits, much, much better to the patient. So you may be able to bring people in from small and medium sized businesses in a group opportunity like that through and LinkedIn can be a good channel for that. So there's some great, um, uh, great resources to market this to your community. Darren, why don't we put your uh, link uh, for a marketing strategy meeting? Uh, for Equa, let's put that link in the sh show notes. By the way, that link is Equa, e -K -W -A .com forward slash MSM. And that's available for any of our Thriving Dentist Show listeners to uh, to go to. There's no cost to schedule a marketing strategy meeting. Lila Stone can share with you uh, how your analytics are working, what could be improved, and uh, a plan uh, to have you master digital marketing in 2023 and beyond, uh, which part of that plan could include, you know, marketing your in-office membership plan. Absolutely. Uh, that's complimentary. And it's ekwa.com slash MSM. Gary, let me jump to our next question. Um, this is my second question for you. I'm undecided on whether I should administer my in-office membership plan in-house or use an outside resource. What are your thoughts? A uh, great question. And I'm going to make it real simple for you. Either option is, is useful, but here's how you might decide. Uh, we just need an administrative uh, team member that is comfortable with an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, if you're, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be, you know, like uh, uh, an Excel spreadsheet wizard, <laughs> but if your team member is comfortable with an Excel spreadsheet, then it's something that that team member could easily administer in your practice because you're going to simply have, you know, all the payments, all the card information that's going to be put into an Excel spreadsheet. So if you have someone that's comfortable and fluent with an Excel spreadsheet, that would be the first criteria. And the other criteria is you want to be appropriately staffed. If you're thinly staffed administratively, then you probably want to outsource this. And many offices are thinly staffed right now. They're shorthanded. And if you're shorthanded, or maybe, maybe not necessarily shorthanded, but no one's got extra time, then maybe you want to outsource it because I don't want a team member to divert activity. What's the most important activity in any dental practice? The schedule the doctor's schedule or the hygiene schedule. So if you have a scheduling coordinator that's also going to be your administrator for your membership plan, but now that team member isn't able to spend her time filling the schedule because she's over here managing your membership plan, that would be a mistake in my opinion. So if you're if if, if you do have a, a administrative team member that is fluent with Excel spreadsheet and has some time bandwidth then it's something you could do in-house. And if not, then I'd outsource it because I don't want time taken away from the schedule um, administering your membership plan. Does that make sense as a simple kind of decision-making criteria, Niren? Absolutely, Gary. I think uh, that way you're giving them a kind of a framework to think about how to decide whether they need to outsource or that they can do it themselves. And, you know, ask your team member, you know, let's say your team member's name is Susan. Susan, if maybe Susan would like to do this because she likes spreadsheets, but ask her, Susan, will, will that take too much time away from, uh, you know, her scheduling uh, responsibilities? If that's the case, you don't want to, um, 
you don't want to have that effect uh, keeping the schedule filled. And, and maybe in the beginning, you start out uh, administering yourself because it'll start out with a relatively small number of patients. And as you grow, you get to a certain point, maybe then you outsource it because now it's it's uh, become a, a bigger project because of the sheer number. And frankly, you you want hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of patients on your membership plan. So that might be another way. Think of it as graduated. Initially, you do it on your own. And later, uh, you outsource to a company like Boom Cloud. Uh, once it, it it becomes a more administrative um, challenge. And again, they can show you how to do it. So the patient pays the fees. Right. I have a question number three for you. I pay my hygienists on a commission. What is the best way to calculate commission for membership plan patients? Oh, okay. Great question. So, um, and I, I like, by the way, the concept of, of having a hygienist paid on commission. Um, because now they're they're paid for results. You know, I like that. That's a very useful construct for for hygiene commission. Typically, in fact, what we do at LifeSmiles is we have a a, a daily guarantee against a twenty eight percent commission, whichever is greater. We pay them whichever is greater on that, so they have upside potential on that twenty eight percent commission. But but I think a simple way to do this is to take your annual fee. Let let's say the annual fee, Naren, was three hundred and fifty dollars. And I'm picking, remember I said the fee range was 350 to 450. Again, you decide, doctor. But let's say it's 350. Then if we break that down into the two hygiene appointments a year, that'd be 175 per hygiene appointment. Naren, are you following along on the math? Yes. That makes sense? Yes. And I would credit all of that to the hygienist, e- even though I know there's exam fee involved, you know, the doctor exam fee. But I would, I would apply that $175, you know, fee half of the annual fee to the hygienist commission. Now, this works really well if you're a solo dental practice and and you're the owner. Now, if you do have an associate doctor or associates and the associates are doing the exams, you've got to pay the associate the exam. So then come up with an agreeable fee that you allocate uh, for the exam fee. So if you have an associate, you're paying that exam fee. But I would be on the generous side of it and, and take the annual fee divided by two and count that as, um, you know, the hygiene production for that hour, for that appointment. Does that make sense, Darren? Makes sense. So Again, if, you it's may have to down, if it's yes. $400, then it's 200 per yeah. appointment. And then you can pay 28% of that or the higher off. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, very simple way to do that. And again, it can be adapted with associate or associates uh, come up with an agreeable fee to pay. You know, if, if, it ex- if the uh, associates doing the exams are going to have to pay him or her, you know, an exam fee for that. Come up with that. Uh, come up with something that's win-win all the way around. Great question. Absolutely. Let me ask you question number four. We do some high value services such as place and restore dental implants and adult orthodontics. Implants have some higher hardware costs and the lab fee for Invisalign is significant. Would you consider to exclude some services that would not be covered under our out in office membership plan. I guess what they're saying is the 10% savings you give for high value services, should we do it for all everything we do? Or is it only for certain types of things? High value. That's services? a great question. This came up when, uh, you know, when uh, Paul, uh, initially we were a solo dentist office, just Paul and Paul and I as owners. And that question came up. And uh, my thinking was, I didn't want to have a bunch of fine print that are excluded. Mm-hmm. So what I said to Paul, I said, you know what? I have a strong feeling that this is all going to come out in the wash. Yeah, we do have some higher costs with implant hardware. And, and yes, the Invisalign lab fee represents higher costs. But let's not have fine print. Uh, so my answer to that question is, no, I wouldn't exclude any services in your practice. Ever, and if it's done in your office, it's covered. That makes it really easy, mm-hmm. right? If it's done in your office, it's covered. Um, and and yes, you, you do incur some costs related to services like implants and, and Invisalign. However, my my feeling when we did this in 2007 was it would come out in the wash. And in reality, that's exactly what happened. And now there's no fine print, right? How does that feel to the patient? No fine print. And, and you know, uh, what if what if we said, well, Invisalign isn't covered? What if the only thing they needed or wanted was Invisalign? Doesn't that right. feel like a bummer? Yes. <laughs> It's have you the, ever been, uh, you know, have you ever seen, you have know, you've been drawn into an ad, you know, and then you discover, oh, well, that's, it's, it's just a bait and switch. It just drew me in. I didn't want to have that happen. I want it to be something that, hey, if we do it in our practice, you get a 10% savings. 
So I recommend not excluding anything because it sure makes it, uh, you know, something very easy to talk about to our patients. And it's easy to present it as a benefit without any possible backlash of exclusions. Also, it's easier to administer, right? I mean, otherwise your team has to like know every detail of all the nuances. Yeah. Here, it's pretty straightforward and simple. Yeah, it's, it's very straightforward. Anything we do in the practice, you want to run it by the filter. How would it feel if I was a patient? So how would it feel to you, Naren, if the only thing you needed or wanted was Invisalign? Oh, that's not covered. Sorry, Naren. All right. How does that feel to you? Yeah, I feel like cheater. I'm cheated, right? Especially <laughs> I paid money to buy that membership plan. So it's yeah. not like, it's a benefit. It's a paid benefit, not like a free benefit. Yeah, cover it. I'd, I'd cover it. And what we found in experience now, and you know, now that's what... Uh, uh, 16 years of experience, it does come out in the wash. It, it comes right. out in the wash. You know, there's many services you do that don't have high, like, you know, many, you know, simple restorative dentistry fillings. Huh? What's our lab expense with fillings? None. You know, we have materials. Yes. But um, it comes out in the wash. And uh, what we, I thought it would be the case. And that's proven it out over time. Yeah, the last and the fifth question, I don't even know what the answer is. So I'm going to ask it. I wish I would have listened to the episode before I set my in-office membership plan. I set ours at 20%. Can you help me or suggest a good approach to change it to 10% that you are recommending? Great question. This actually has come up multiple times with clients. Now, let me answer it this way. First of all, I'm sorry you didn't listen to this first. <laughs> to those of you that are listening to it, you get the benefit of that. 10% is the answer. If you're giving away 20, you're giving away more than you need to. But, Naren, let's think about human nature. Do people like things taken away from them? Uh, not really. Take as long as you like. What do you think? No. No, no. So here's my suggestion. Grandfather everybody in your membership plan. Everybody that's in it, 20%, grandfather them in. Right. Keep them at 20%. But just pick a date in the future and, you know, just pick a date. You might say as of May 1st this year, any new patients we have signed up, it's going to be a 10% discount. Now, there's already listeners thinking about this. Well, what happens if a new patient we presented at 10% and she said, well, my friend Millie, my neighbor next door gets 20%. All right. What do we do? We say quietly, we say, you know what, Linda? The accountant has a fit when I'm going to do this, but here's what I'm going to do. Because you're a friend of Millie, I'm going to give you the friend of Millie deal. And I'm going to grandfather you at 20%, just like Millie. Just please keep it quiet because anyone that does sign up from now on is now, it gets a 10% discount. But please keep that quiet. But I'm going to give you the friends of Millie uh, special rate. How's everyone going to feel about that, Darren? They'll feel good about it, especially yep. a person who got that special deal. Now, it does create a, a little bit of administration in your practice, but it's nothing that you can't manage. It's nothing that your, your team members can't manage. Would you kind of say, okay, we are going to grandfather you in, but at some point it's going to go to 15% or would you just, nope. just let it be? I'd let it be. I'd let it be. It still works at 20 because it's better than 45 to 50. That's true. And, I, and also in reality, Naren, most practices haven't figured out how to market this and the number of patients they have at 20% is relatively small. That's a good point. In the future, it's going to be a lot larger, and that future is going to be 10%. Mm -hmm. But you know, most people have just been sort of offering it to existing patients. They haven't figured out how to market it. So it's not a big uh, big amount, but I, but I want to keep them happy. So we're going right. to keep them at, we're going to grandfather them in. We're going to keep them at that, uh, at that 20%. Uh, but that's how I would do that moving forward. Just pick a date in the future, and then, uh, and then deal with the exceptions on a case-by-case -case basis as they come up by, by being, um, being flexible and grandfathering them in as a friend of Millie, as I said in the example. Well, Naren, this has been a fun episode. I love the granular detail. Sometimes I like the philosophical episodes because we talk about big picture kind of stuff. And sometimes it's really fun to get in the weeds. And this was more of a, a episode in the weeds. I hope you appreciate it. Um, some thanks are in order. Um, I want to thank all of our listeners. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, thanks for sharing the Thriving Dentist Show with your colleagues. Uh, by the way, if you haven't hit subscribe, on your podcast directory, be sure to hit subscribe because that means every Wednesday when we upload a new show, it's automatically uploaded to your listening device. And also, if you have colleagues that you think could benefit from this, please share it with them. Secondly, Naren, I want to thank you. Uh, thanks for co-hosting us. And thanks to your team at Equa for all the things you do in the marketing world to help Dennis master the world of digital marketing. On that note, uh, thank you all for the privilege of your time. 
Naren and I look forward to connecting with you on the next Thriving Dentist Show.